guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game on the tabletop is called Bitten. Bitten is a three to six player game. Takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play for ages 13 and up. In the game Bitten, you're going to get a secret role, either the zombie class, the werewolf, or the vampire class. You're going to use that as your lair, and then you're going to have a hand of recruits. In the game, your objective is to secure locations with your specific type of recruit based on the required cards on the location. If you can secure three locations with their specific type uh, of the five, you're then going to be able to have a chance at winning the game. Each of you would reveal if zombies controlled all the different locations and you were a zombie, you would reveal if you had more zombies in your lair than anything else, you would win. If not, you would lose. If all zombies lost that condition, everybody else would win. Otherwise, you win. And a second of, a second different condition is of course in your layer if you have multiple uh, if you have more uh, different types of uh, your class than any other class at least three uh, then you can win all by yourself provided nobody else plays a card onto your layer each of the different uh, card locations are going to do different things or require different things and in the deck there's going to be recruits and some of the cards will have either all three recruits available or they might have a slayer or they might have just singular one recruit you're gonna be playing cards into your opponent's layers and of course you can play cards into uh, the different locations but what you can't do is place cards in your own layer uh, the objective of the game is to win and let me show you how to do that here we have Bitten and all its contents. You're going to be getting a deck of recruit cards. You're going to be getting a deck of locations, layer cards with the three different types of factions, two zombies, two vampires, and two werewolves. When you start off, you're going to go ahead and shuffle these up so that nobody knows what is what. And you're going to give every player five of these recruit cards. I've got the rule book over here and the box along with the first player marker. You can just go ahead and give it to somebody. And then these, of course, are going to be the controlling factions on these areas here. And they can switch around depending um, on how many cards are required in these locations. So first of all, these locations will ne not, won't necessarily lock, but when you've placed a certain amount of them, uh, a certain amount of cards on here, that will de de determine what uh, the location is being controlled by. So for instance, if I played these, if these three cards are played here, you've got three cards, the, no more cards can be played here. There's two werewolves and a vampire, which means that the werewolves are going to control this location, which is basically how you're going to be ending the game, is if three locations are controlled by one specific class. Now, uh, these cards are going to be played from a player's hand. So after everybody has gotten their five cards in hand, then they're going to have the option after receiving a layer card uh, to do a certain action. So everybody gets one of their layer cards here. And these are going to determine the specific class that you are, along with who may or may not be on your team. These are all hidden rules, though. You get a vampire here, a werewolf, a zombie, and another zombie. Now, nobody knows how their uh, actions are or, or the different types of... Uh, layers they have so these are secret here and so are the cards here uh, these extra ones are going to get removed these are going to set aside and then of course remember each of these locations has its own special ability uh, this one says when you recruit a card um, when a card is recruited and played on this location, you get a barricade another uh, location if possible, which is basically you can choose to remove that location and put a new one down. That's what barricading does. You can also choose to use the monster slayer card in here to remove a monster that is currently on one of the locations that you play it on. This one says when it's raided, all recruit cards on this location are discarded. Werewolves can only be played to this location if another faction is on the same card. So a werewolf vampire can be played here, but a werewolf by itself cannot. This location has one vampire and one zombie to start with but still need six cards to close and this is a new studio it says whenever a recruit uh, a, car, a recruit is played on this location raid another location as well oh, okay not that's pretty interesting. So when you recruit on here, you can then raid the location, getting rid of something. Okay, so the beginning of the game is pretty simple. On your turn, they're going to get to select either A, your hand, or B, your layer. Now, of course, these are face down, and the cards that are placed on here are also face down. Cards that are played on here are face up. Now, when you start the game, you're always going to start by selecting a recruit, for, uh, the recruit in your hand, because these are the only recruits you have currently. And you're going to select one of them based on maybe what you are, maybe a werewolf vampire, or maybe all three of them. And you're going to put it face down in front of you, signifying that you've chosen. And everyone is going to do this at the same time. Maybe this werewolf will select a zombie werewolf here. And everybody's basically just choosing uh, to place one of them face down in front of them so that nobody else knows currently what they are choosing to play. After everybody has uh, chosen, then in turn order, players are going to play cards onto either A, locations, face up, 
or B, their layer, other player's layers face down. You can never play on your own layer face down, but you can always play on another player's layer face down. So in this instance, he's got a wild card here, and he can choose if he wants to play on this location here. Of course, it says when it's rated, um, all recruit cards are discarded on here, but it's not being rated. So there is one of the three cards required to close this area. The next player can go ahead and choose a location, or of course, face down, choose a layer to play down on. And he's got a zombie werewolf. So he puts this over here. It now is going to uh, induce more an interesting aspect. So if you look at here, now we have the two zombies and two werewolves. So werewolf and zombies are ahead on this location. And you can go ahead and flip over this card here. He's got a werewolf and a zombie as well. So if he played on here, these guys would actually be controlled. Both of them would actually control it together. And he's a zombie, so that's going to help him out. So he would play this card here. And then the werewolf and, of course, the zombie tokens are going to be on this location. Remember? though this is ever rated all of them are gone normally a raid actually just removes one and then this next player is going to get a flip over and he can play anywhere he wants this location has one vampire and one zombie to start with so we'll go ahead and play it over here not too shabby right and after everybody has played all of their cards now either in the layers or uh, from their hand into the locations here then they're going to pass their hand clockwise so each of the each of the players are going to move their cards so that they're going to be getting a whole new set of cards and this will continue until there's only one, one card left in each player's hand in which case each person will get an additional four cards the first player marker is going to move and that's the next player's turn now if for instance each player actually did did have cards in their in their layer like this this actually happened at some point throughout the game uh, this player could choose to either pick this location of uh, this layer or choose his hand once again if he chooses his layer he's going to get to look at all the cards and then he's got to select one of them face down if there's only one you get to select just that one and you always want to have more of your type than the type uh, th than any other type in your layer that's how you win the game so it's very important you do that uh, with this one here he's got a werewolf and a vampire so it's tied so getting rid of this is good especially if he thought somebody wasn't on his team and was trying to screw him over placing this here as opposed to placing one from his hand when Whenever he does that, though, he's going to have to discard a card from his hand uh, at the end of the game. He's just going to go ahead and discard it face down, uh, signifying that it's, it's on the same level as everybody else. There's always going to be four, uh, five, four, three, two, and then one cards, and then a redraw. Um, so the game is now, how, how does the game end now? So you basically have an idea of how to play the game. The game ends in uh, one of three different ways. The first way is if one faction controls three locations, just like that. And of course you have to have all the number of cards required. So six cards here and zombie being the highest, five cards here and zombie being the highest, and then a tie from zombie and werewolves. This would end the game. And in which case everybody is going to flip over and zombies are going to attempt to win. In order for them to do that, they have to have more zombies than anything else in their in their in their locations. Uh, um uh, and then, of course, I think they're okay in a tie as well. So in this case, the zombie's tied, so I think he would be okay. And this player actually has one more zombie than anything else. He's got two wilds here. So the zombies would win. However, let's say, for instance, that he had three werewolves and only one zombie. He would lose. And let's say that he had two werewolves and one zombie. He would lose. In that case, all the other players would win. The other win condition is pretty simple. On your turn, if you draw from your lair, let's say... So we'll have this werewolf here, this lair. And um, he's got... Let's see if I can do this correctly for you. And this one. And this one. So he has these cards here. And on his turn, he chooses to go ahead and look at his layer. And he's going to reveal and uh, secretly. And then he's going to select one. And he's going to play this one here, face, uh, face down. And then uh, when it's his turn, he's going to flip these guys over. And if he has at least three one two three four and of course more than anything else he can win all by himself provided he plays one and this one doesn't count towards that total and that nobody else play on his lair that turn so that's another way to win that's by securing your lair the other way is obviously securing the towns and then having the most in your lair you can win with multiple players a singular player or if both players did not successfully do what was needed in their lair the other players will win that's the basic idea of the game bitten of course there are different locations that do different things and there's also of course these slayers that can choose to raid and remove a, a, a monster or choose to barricade and remove a location with nothing on it and select a new location onto the board but that's it let's talk about it so what do i think about the game bitten well first of all i thought this was gonna be a hidden trader game slash hidden roll game and it's not really a hidden trader game it, it is kind of hidden roll because you don't want to know what anybody else is but you can start trying to deduce who people are based on the cards they're playing if i played a wild and i played a zombie werewolf and i played a zombie vampire chances 
chances are I'm probably a zombie. Uh, of course, you can use that to throw people off. You can play cards on places that aren't going to be needed. You can play cards to remove other cards, and you can use slayers to start removing different cards. So you can trick players to do certain things you want to do. There's a ton of different locations, and they all have their own different abilities. Zombies can be played here in this location. Other factions in this play on the same card. When rated, discard the recruit card. Uh, when rated, the discarded recruit card is moved to any other location the player chooses. So instead of dying in the sewer, he's simply going to move somewhere else. So that can be actually very useful to control certain areas. Shooting ranges, biker bars, mansions, parks, nightclubs, church, bell tower, motel, graveyard, so on and so forth. You want to control your layer, but you also want to control the locations, but you don't know what's in your layer unless you look. Do you trust what your opponents or friends are putting into your loca location? Oh, I'm on your team. I'm going to put this loca I'm gonna put this thing into your layer. I know that you're this and I want to give you this. I don't want to say it out loud though. Uh, if you pull it though, it's only one there. It's going to hurt you. However, it can also make you lose the game. So there is a bit of tug of war throughout the game. Whether just because there's two zombies doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be helping each other. And in fact, you can win by yourself by securing your lair. You don't win with anybody else when you're securing your lair. Uh, so you could be getting help from a friend and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I just win the game. Sorry, sucks to be you. Maybe you shouldn't have been donating too much to me because I never donated to you. So that has that opportunity as well. Securing those locations gives it a different style of gameplay. In fact, I haven't played a game like this. I played games where you're securing locations. I played area control style games. I played deduction games and team based games. But this one has a unique, weird style to it. There's not a lot of conflict in the game as far as like okay like what's going like i don't like this you're doing this or whatever because you don't really know what anybody's doing throughout the entire game you have an idea some people might not like you putting stuff into their uh in, into their zone their layer some people might unfortunately though you're basically manipulating your layer as people are playing things into there and most of the time players are trying to mess up your layer thinking oh he's probably this i'm going to give him this instead into his layer thusly making his is unlikely to lose over here but if somebody's not smart enough and they think that they're um, they're messing you up because you keep playing zombie cards and they give you vampires, but in fact you are a vampire and you pull all your layer cards and you throw one away and bam, you got four vampires there, game over. So there's a little bit of surprise and intrigue to it. You don't have to win one way, you can win another way. And that can actually uh, benefit you. And it's really, really cool. I really like this game. I feel like it's very unique and very interesting. Uh, it's, it's black and white. The cards are cool. I like the artwork a lot. That's got town artwork. Uh, it's got like basically symbology for the cards itself it's in a small little condensed box and it, the rules are very easy very easy to explain very easy to understand it takes about five minutes to explain hopefully you understand based on my little explanation here um it works i really enjoy this game it's a game i definitely pick up and just play around with other players i think if you enjoy a little bit of deduction if you'll enjoy a little bit of area control and then a little bit of mystery because there's a little bit of like bizarreness to the game that i just can't put my finger on as far as like which way do you want to play? And is there a better strategy to placing on locations or not? I don't know for, for you know, for, for real. I'm not, I'm not like for sure on this. I've played it a bunch of times now and I still am like, do I pretend to be this and actually not be it and then get cards from my lair and then eventually pull and then win with my lair? Or do I try and help out my teammate who might or might not be out there by playing these cards and then hoping they're going to secure my lair for me? I don't know, right? Like, what's the best idea to do this game? But if I'm too cautious, I might get screwed over by somebody else. So it's up to you whether or not you're going to be interested in Bitten. For me, it's a really cool little game. I'm definitely, it's definitely going to hit the tabletop a lot more. These are the kind of games I really enjoy and like to play. Um, but I try and give it a, a biased, a, an, unbi non, an unbiased opinion as far as whether you'll play it or not. So if you like deduction, a little bit of strategy, a little bit of area control, and a little bit of like this team-based, sort of team-based, sort of not team-based game as far as, and as well as the black and white artwork, then definitely check out Bitten. It'll be in the description below if you're interested. For me... Solid game, I definitely approve of it.